Within each data set, LiDAR and spectral data, we are looking for essentially two different things. Uh, with LiDAR, we're looking for changes, subtle changes in uh, the elevation or the ground uh, surface, and those can be detected uh, using ground-based or aerial LiDAR. Um, the, the resolutions of them are um, proportionate to their distance away from the ground. But um, what we're doing is we're, we're, we're looking for elevation differences with LiDAR, and with spectral imagery, we're looking for um, we're looking for potential dis areas of disturbance in the ground. Um, and we can also, from the spectral imagery, derive general um, indices that indicate uh, vegetation health or stressors that might be imposed upon the vegetation. And when the data are very well aligned, um, I should note, when we combine them, there, and there's one, say, pixel that is anomalous, uh, when compared to the surrounding pixels, we can assign it a potentially higher priority in terms of investigation. A lot of times when you're dealing with areas that have been affected by conflict, you um, sometimes the areas are inaccessible um, politically. You can't get access. Um, sometimes it's simply not safe for personnel to go in. Um, and what this allows you to do is you're, you're limiting that safety risk. There are still hundreds of thousands of people missing um, from contemporary conflict and a remote sensing method for detecting mass graves could, could help address the issue of missing persons worldwide. The families that haven't received answers about their missing loved ones um, would obviously benefit from this work and um, it's, it, it helps in the collection of evidence in the prosecution of, of war crimes, um, crimes against humanity, genocide. So the work is very important on a global scale.